What would you say the biggest hurdle is for people uh, doing smell training to get good results? Right. I think that, well, there are a couple of challenges. One is getting people to stick with it. So for that reason, Absent is here. We're here to motivate you, help you understand why it's good, and that I think will keep people going. Another really important challenge is that when people sit down quietly to do something like this, that uh, you know, they're already feeling bad about losing their sense of smell, they raise the jar to their nose, they don't smell anything, and then suddenly they get into a very negative conversation with themselves. So what you need to do is to get people not to focus on that, to, to sort of turn away from any kind of negative uh, comments that you might be hearing in your mind, like, um, this is boring, why am I doing this? You know, I can't smell anything, so what's the point? So you really need to um, sort of intellectualize that and say that's actually counterproductive and you always want to keep, uh, you always want to try to bring your attention back to what you're doing and listen out for that tiny signal. Do you think there are any um, mental states that are helpful with, with doing this kind of thing? How would you say the sort of optimal way to approach starting smell training is? Uh, I think that you need, when you smell train, you need to do it in a quiet place. Uh, you don't want to be distracted by listening to the radio or looking at Facebook or anything like that. This is your time to focus on uh, a mindful activity and you really need to use all of your powers of concentration to concentrate on whatever smell message there is. And for that reason, you, it needs to be quiet. Uh, you need to be uh, alone to the greatest extent. It's got to be a quiet time. And I also think that there are other benefits for that. You know, you are uh, going through a really difficult time. This is time for you. And we know from other studies that smell training uh, actually can lift mood and improve cognitive function. And that was a study that was done on the elderly. So uh, I, I do think that smell training makes you feel better. And a lot of people say this, I certainly experienced it. I also think that it's, you know, if you have been told by a doctor that there is nothing that can be done for you, this is something that you can do for yourself. And that's empowering and is in itself motivating. So I, w I think that it's good on all different kind of levels. So what would you say if I came to you and I said, I've been smell training for three weeks, four weeks now, and I'm, I'm not just not getting anything? I would say stick with it. Um, it can take a long time, um, but I've heard some incredible stories of people who have smell trained for a long time without getting any messages, and then suddenly they have a breakthrough. Um, the, you just have to stick with it, and it's not enough to do it for three weeks. You've got to stick with it for three or four months. And what about longer? Longer can't hurt. Um, I've, uh, I've heard of two interesting cases, head injuries, that stuck with it for years and then had a breakthrough. And what about if you are getting some results, uh, continuing it on after the three months? Well, once you start getting results, then of course you're, you're immediately hooked and you want to keep doing it. And that's when I think it's great if you can um, sort of change your kit a little bit and make uh, more challenges for yourself. So the, so the, um, the smell the difference uh, training is, I think, a really interesting one. That's what three, three odors that are quite similar. And then switching back and forth to see if you can differentiate between the three. Um, I think that's an excellent, uh, an excellent way of training and one that, of course, is used by perfumers. So um, that's, a, that's something that I would definitely recommend. Is there a, any regression? Can you backslide? Is, it, is there sort of day-to-day -day variability? So what we know from the Facebook group is there are a lot of people who are smell training and feel that they have achieved a certain level, but then they lose their sense of smell entirely this seems to be a fluctuation, uh, perhaps an inflammation that we don't quite yet understand. So just to clarify, those are two different things. If you smell train and you're not having fluctuations, you will not regress if you stop. But if you are still um, in the early period of your COVID-19 infection, you may expect fluctuations, but that's nothing to do with smell training.